Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker and it's a beautiful day to show you how to make 3D paper crafts like this adorably cute cat and the great maker show and tell. So 3D paper crafts are super cool and trendy right now, but it can be a challenge to put them together. So how do you do it? Well, first you need a good quality paper craft pattern. The best 3D paper craft patterns will have good instructions and preferably numbers or letters drawn right inside and on the pattern so you know what goes where. So my 3D cat pattern, which you can see right here, has the numbers right on it. And I'm gonna tell you how to get it totally free so that you can make this too. Second, you need good quality cardstock. Avoid copy paper and construction paper. For the best results, use a solid core 65 to 80 pound cardstock, like this one here. I recommend Cardstock Warehouse, Recollections, and Cricut as all good quality cardstocks that work well for 3D paper crafts. Avoid the fancy stuff if you're new to this. Just say no to heavily textured papers and glitters. They're harder to both cut and glue. Third, you need a good quality glue, preferably one with a precision tip. I am using the Barely Art Glue, which is my new favorite glue, and it works like a charm. If you don't have this glue, get yourself a fine tip applicator bottle to use. I have linked these items below this video so you know exactly how to find them. And fourth, you need a way to cut your 3D paper crafts. Now my personal preference is to use a Cricut cutting machine, as otherwise it takes a really long time to do it by hand. But I know not everyone has one, so if you need to, you can use a craft knife or even a pair of scissors. If you are using a Cricut cutting machine, I also recommend you use a scoring tool, either the scoring stylus or the single scoring wheel. If you use the stylus, you can use this on the Explorer, the Maker. The scoring wheel only works on the Maker, but it does create a deeper score. Now, you may have also noticed the bag of Swedish fish right here. <laughs> that is totally optional, but it's helpful, and I'll explain how that works during our tutorial. Now, one little thing before I get started, I want everyone to know that my 17-year-old daughter, Alexa, designed this adorable cat. She designed it in Blender. She is so awesome and talented and she shared it with us and I turned it into a pattern for you to use. All right, so are you ready to cut and assemble a paper craft project? We're gonna do it using our 3D cat as an example. So let's head on over to the computer so I can show you where to get the free pattern and then we will get started. Step one, get a paper craft pattern. You can buy paper craft patterns from places like Etsy and Cricut Design Space, but I recommend starting with a free pattern to see if this is something you enjoy first. And you can get our free 3D cat pattern from my blog. Go to jennifermaker.com 318 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the pattern by searching the page for design number 318 and then click it to download an SVG cut file for cutting with a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. Step two, cut out the paper craft pieces. If you're going to cut your paper craft by hand, print out the PDF on cardstock and cut it apart with a craft knife or scissors. If you're going to cut your cat with a cutting machine, you'll want to do a little prep work first, but it will save you a ton of time in the long run. Let me show you how to prep this paper craft pattern for a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload one of the three SVG cut files from my library to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to unzip and upload files, please watch my SVGs Made Simple training series over at jennifermaker.com svgs. There are three different paper craft designs in this folder, a solid color simple cat, a multicolor tuxedo cat, and a fun glowing eyed Halloween black cat that you can use with an LED tea light. To keep it simple, I will show you how to make the simple solid color cat. The other two designs are cut and assembled in the same way, so don't worry. 
While we try to preset score and pen lines and attach them to the base layers for you, when we design it, it's not always a guarantee that they will come in that way when you upload them. So when you upload the file and add it to your canvas in Cricut Design Space, I want you to check the layers over here on the right. If you see the words score and pen, it should be all preset and you're good to go. But if everything here in this layers panel says basic cuts, then that means that you need to set your score and pen lines and attach them to your base layers before you cut. To set score and pen lines, first select the cat pattern on the canvas by clicking on it with your mouse until you see the frame appear around all four sides of it like this. Then click ungroup in the upper right corner so that you have four individual groups. In each of the groups, you will see two or more layers. In this paper craft pattern, there are four layers. Now, not all paper craft patterns will have this many layers. Some will just have two, score and cut. But I added these extra layers to make it extra easy for you to assemble. The top layer is intended to be drawn, so all of your numbers can be put right onto the paper. The middle two layers can be drawn or scored. You get to decide. You would choose to make one a draw layer if you want to see your score lines better. And this is what I'm going to do in this video. Or you might choose to make both of these middle layers score layers. And you'll do this if you want to really make sure that you have a good, deep and strong score. And this is particularly a good choice if you're using the scoring stylus instead of the scoring wheel. Doubling up on your score layer like this is a great way to improve the depth of your score lines, which makes it easier to fold. And the bottom layer is always going to be the cut layer. So to begin, identify a pen layer at the top of a group like this one. Select it in the layers panel by clicking on it and then go up to the operation menu at the top of the screen and choose pen. You'll want to do this for all pen layers in all of your groups. Remember, it's the top layer. If you're not using a pen, you can delete that layer or you can hide it with the eye icon. Now find a score layer, which in my pattern is the second layer of each group. So select it in the layers panel, then go up to the operation menu and choose score and do this for all of those score layers. Now you get to decide what to do with the third layer. I'm going to change mine to pen so I can see my score lines better. But you could also choose score if you wanted. Just change all of these third layers in your group to either pen or score. Do not leave them as basic cut. That's very important. You can, of course, delete or hide those layers as well. And the fourth layer can stay as it is. It is set to basic cut already, and that's exactly what we want it to do. Now select each group by clicking on the layer line with a little arrow that you see here and attach the pen and score layers to the base layer by clicking on attach down here in the bottom right. Do this for all of your groups. This step is super important to do because if you don't do it, your Cricut won't know which cut layer you want your pen and score layers to appear upon and they'll just be floating out on a mat all by themselves and it's not what you want. This is what the layers panel in Cricut Design Space should look like when every pen and score line is properly attached to its base cut layer. If you would like to add some writing on the cat's tag, which I think is a fun touch, just click on the text tool over on the left, type in a name or word or whatever you want, change the font to a writing font. I'm using the free Cricut Sans, and then you'll want to change it to writing under the style menu right here. And then resize and position the writing on the tag. And then don't forget to attach the text to one of the tags. So you select both the text and a tag and choose attach. When everything looks good, save your work up here with the save option. And then click make it in the top right and check your mats. 
you should see four mats. One mat for your inner ears and neck, one mat for your collar and tags, and two for your main solid color, unless of course you change colors. But this is the basic simple cat and it's what I recommend you do if you're new to doing layers and paper crafting and scoring and all that fun stuff. Now click continue and choose your material. If you're using 65 or 80 pound cardstock as I am, you can choose medium cardstock and give it a little extra pressure. I recommend you use a smooth or very lightly textured cardstock for the best results. Heavily textured and glitter cardstocks will be really hard to score and glue, so please avoid them unless you're ready for a real challenge. Now you may be wondering about those Swedish fish that I suggested earlier. If you got them, tear open that package and put a few into a little bowl. Kitties and crafters deserve little treats, and they'll help us keep up a morale for what is to come. <laughs> All right, so it's time to cut your kitty pieces. Place your cardstock on your machine mat in the upper left corner. If you're using a patterned or single-sided cardstock, put the side that you want to be seen on the outside of your cat face down on your machine mat. Use a clean and sticky blue light grip machine mat for the best results. You can also use a green standard grip machine mat so long as it's not like brand new and super sticky. This is because the simple act of drawing and scoring will press your cardstock into your mat and you'll find it challenging to remove your cardstock from a super sticky green mat. If you're using a scoring stylus, insert it now into clamp A on your Cricut Explore or Maker. If you're using a scoring wheel, place your single scoring wheel into clamp B on your Cricut Maker. Yes, these two tools go in different clamps, but just remember you only need one, either the stylus or the wheel. The single scoring wheel looks like this and it has the numbers 0, 1 printed on the side. You don't want to use the double scoring wheel, which has the numbers 0, 2 on it for this project. And don't confuse the scoring wheel with the rotary blade, which looks similar but will not work for this project. If you're doing the draw layers as I am, you'll also need to insert a fine point pen. If you're using the scoring wheel, you can put your pen in now into clamp A on your cutting machine. If you're using a scoring stylus, you'll be prompted to put it in after the scoring is done. Either way, when you put the pen into your machine, you'll want to push down on it until you hear it click, and then place the cap on the end so you don't lose it, and then be sure to close the clamp. If you're cutting black or really dark cardstock, I recommend you use something like a silver gel or metallic pen so you can actually see your draw lines on your paper. Otherwise, a black pen works just fine. All right, so load your machine mat into your Cricut and then press the flashing button to begin scoring. Your machine will first score, then draw, and finally cut. And you'll be prompted on screen when to change your tools. So keep an eye on your screen as you're working. Once everything is all drawn, scored, and cut, you can press unload to remove your machine mat. Now flip your mat over onto your work surface and gently peel the mat away from your cardstock to avoid curling or ripping your paper. If necessary, use a spatula tool to release small, delicate bits from your mat without tearing them. Continue doing this until all mats are cut. And feel free to indulge in a few fishies along the way, which I'm sure any self-respecting cat would totally do. The cutting process took me about one hour total. You could speed this up by not drawing one or both of the layers if you don't want to take that long. Step three, fold and crease your paper craft pieces. These are the pieces you will have when you're finished cutting your cat pieces. There's a head, two outer ears, two inner ears, the neck, a front body, back body, two side bodies, some feet, and a tail. And then we have the optional collar and tag that you can choose to cut if you want. The first thing you need to do is fold all the pieces on the score lines. 
Most folds will be fold ins, which is also known as a valley fold, as you can see me doing here. So you want your crease to be at the bottom with the paper folded forward into itself. The paper should form a V shape when you unfold it. But some of the folds will be fold outs, also known as mountain folds, which are indicated by two symbols like this. If you see those, fold them outward with the pen lines on the outside of the fold rather than in. For a mountain fold, the crease is at the top and the paper is folded behind itself. For example, the inner ear folds have these symbols and should be folded like this. The best way to fold the pieces is to press your thumbnail or a scraper tool against the score line and fold the section in against itself. If you want nice crisp folds, press the crease after you folded it with your finger or a scraper tool. So go ahead and fold all of your paper craft pieces. I'll just speed this up a bit so you don't have to watch the whole thing. <laughs> you may be tempted to move ahead, but it's really best if you fold everything and then go ahead and glue. This will take you about 30 minutes. And when you're all done folding, take a little break and nibble on a tasty little fish. Here's what all of the pieces of the 3D cat look like after being folded. I didn't show the optional collar and tag here, but you would still want to fold those. Step four, attach and assemble your paper craft. Generally, on any paper craft, there'll be a point at which you should begin. It either indicates it on the pattern or the instructions say. So beginning with the headpiece of your cat, Look for the word start written on the side with the numbers. Beside it, you will see the number one and near it is another number one. Starting here, apply a small amount of glue to the underside of the tab that's right next to the number one. The tab is quite small, but large enough for a little glue. You don't wanna use that much glue anyways. Just a small amount will work best. I'm using a precision tip on my bottle of Barely Art glue here, which works really, really well. If you find you're struggling with glue, this is the solution. All right, so turn the cardstock over so you can see the good side, which is the side without pen written on it, and line up the number one tab under the number one side so that the fold of the tab meets the other side's edge. And then that lets you catch any glue messes that might seep out right away so it doesn't like get globbed there. Now press the tab against the side, holding the two pieces in place with your fingers until they stay together. This usually only needs five to 10 seconds of pressure. Continue matching up numbers from this point on, gluing and pressing in place with your fingers until each section stays in place. I recommend going in general order, starting with the number two tab next. Just be aware that not all numbers are represented on my 3D cat because I skipped over some numbers during my design process. And be careful not to guess at where sections are glued. Always match numbers when gluing. For example, if you guess, you may think that number 18 and number 26 get glued right next to the sections beside them, but in fact, they join up with number 18 and 26 on the outer ears, so a totally different part. And if you find glue too messy or your glue isn't adhering well to your cardstock, because that can happen, especially if you use glitter or textured cardstock. You can also use double-sided score tape uh, that's just one-eighth of an inch wide. Just be aware it won't be as strong and some of your folds might pop open as you're working with it. That's why I recommend glue. When you're done gluing the head of your 3D cat, it will look like this. Note that the pieces in front of the ear are not glued to anything. They sort of just float there loosely, giving you access to the inside of the head during assembly. You can push them inward for now. This is a great time to enjoy a little fish. Hey, it's a fat-free food. No guilt, right? <laughs> Once your 3D cat head is all glued together, it's time to add the other parts to it by matching up the numbers. 
I recommend you start with the outer ears. Pick up one of the outer ear pieces and begin gluing it in the same way you did with the head, matching up numbers. Like before, I recommend gluing from the good side so you can make sure your edges meet and you can watch for any glue issues. Here's what the outer ear looks like when it's all glued. And then be sure to glue the other outer piece together as well. All right, now it's time to attach the outer ears to the 3D cat's head. Match up the numbers just like before. The pen ink should appear on the inside of the ear. And you may be tempted to glue several tabs at once. I know I was, but I recommend you do just one at a time so that you don't get ahead of yourself and have issues with pieces slipping or not attaching properly. Here's what the 3D cat's head looks like with its outer ears attached. And you can start seeing that it's a cat. Now you'll notice that you can see all of your pen lines on the inside of your cat's ears. But don't worry, we're going to fix that right now with inner ears. There are two inner ear pieces. Glue them into their shapes first. And remember that the inner ear has the symbols that point toward each other, which means you need to both fold and glue it in the opposite direction. When finished, the pen marking should be on the convex side of the ear with the concave side just one solid color, like this and your inner ears should fit right into place inside your outer ears. You should put a thin line of glue around the outer edge of the inner ear, that's the side with the pen, and press it to the outer ear to keep it in place on your kitty cat. Here's what our 3D cat looks like with both the outer ears and inner ears all attached. Now you may need to refill that bowl of Swedish fish by now. <laughs> I know I had to. I had to keep up my morale and my energy. Paper crafting requires patience and positivity. And you know, it's okay if things get a little frustrating, if you have to redo something, especially if you know, you're just learning how to do this. Once the head and ears are attached, it's time to attach the neck. I recommend starting with number 65, matching it up from the collar to the head. Then work your way around the entire circumference of the head, one tab at a time. When you're all finished, your cat head and neck should look like this. All right, now it's time to put the body into shape, beginning with the body front piece. Start with tab number 80 and begin gluing it together, remembering to match tabs to sides as you go. When you're all done, this is what the body front piece looks like. Pretty cool, huh? It doesn't really look like much, but this is the front of our cat. Now glue and add the side pieces to the body front. They fit right into place like puzzle pieces. Once that's done, your next step is to glue and shape the body back piece, starting with tab number 84. And here's what the body back piece looks like when it's all glued and shaped. All right, now let's attach your body front to your body back. I recommend starting by matching up tab 79 and do it one tab at a time. It might be a little tricky to get your hands in place to press both the tabs down, so go slow. Then be sure to attach the other side to close the body piece. Now it's time to put the feet together. Little cute little kitty feet. The feet are really like little boxes, one box for each paw. And if you match numbers, everything goes together properly. Note that there are several fold outs in the feet as marked by the two arrow symbols pointing at one another. Here is what the cute little kitty feet look like when they're all glued and shaped. Might not look like much, just a bunch of four boxes, but trust me, it all goes together awesome. So let's go ahead and attach the feet to the body. Remember to match up numbers. I started with number 131. Go slow and go one tab at a time. Here's what our 3D cat looks like with its little paws attached. All right, we finished both the head and the body. Time for a fishy. 
Okay, so attaching the neck to the body is really just a matter of matching up numbers. But we're attaching two parts and it's not as easy to get our hands in there. So I recommend putting your hand right up inside the cat because that allows you to press on the glued tabs from both the inside and the outside. It's gonna feel a little awkward to glue it this way. Just go slow and be patient. If you cannot get your hand inside your cat, go in through the holes in the front of the ear instead. This is what your 3D cat looks like with the head and the body attached. And you will want to push the flaps in front of the ears up and out a bit so it closes up the hole in the head too and looks like, you know, a cat's head would look. <laughs> now you just need to attach the tail, collar, and tag, all of which are optional. The tail has one tab at the end. Just fold it and glue it wherever you want. It doesn't have to be in the spot I put it. You can put it anywhere you want. And now you can glue on the optional collar and tag if you want. I glued the tag to the inside of the collar and then glued the collar to the cat. Step five, show it off. Your amazing 3D paper craft cat is finished. And all of your numbers are hidden inside the cat, which I think is really cool. You can also make a tuxedo cat like this ginger and white one here. Or how about a black cat for Halloween? This one has cut out eyes so you can light them up with an LED tea light. And that's it. Great work. Everyone has earned a little fishy. So 3D paper crafts are really just so rewarding, especially when you're done, because you just don't need much more other than paper and glue. And it's always so amazing what you can make from so little. This cat is super cool, and I love how you can change the way it looks just by changing the paper color. And I made this black cat over here for Halloween, and you can put a tea light in its eyes to get it to glow. The pumpkins that you see here are 3D paper craft pumpkins as well. They're actually simpler to make than the cat. And I'll be sharing a tutorial on how to make those paper craft pumpkins as well. So keep an eye out for that. Now, if you have any questions about cutting or assembling 3D paper crafts, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to help and see you succeed. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Reminding you to... <laughs> I just hit the... I just hit the kit, said sorry, little kitty.